Now, joining us in the studio, a guy who definitely has his college degree, we have Dr. Frank Lombardo. How are you doing today, Doc? Very good. Thanks for inviting me. You're very welcome. Now, you're an orthopedic? Yes, I am. Are you a surgeon? I am an orthopedic surgeon. Now, when you sit there, like, like when you watch, are you a sports fan at all? A little bit, yeah. Now, when you watch sports, hmm. and, and you see a guy go down, do you, do you a lot of times kind of know what's wrong with him almost immediately? Oftentimes, yes. You know, we, uh, you know, I'm able to analyze the type of injury that they have, the mechanism of the injury, and determine what structure they may have damaged when they fell. Yeah, because you know, that's the, more intuitive. The, yeah. di- the dynamics of the knee. It's, yeah, the anatomy. Yeah. yeah. Now, what about uh, now? What about a situation? Now, this is an injury that I've only heard of, like in the last five years or so, where micro fractures. Right. Now, what is that? Well, microfracture is actually a surgical technique that is performed during surgery where we deliberately break the bone to uh, uh, enhance the healing that may occur uh, in and around the cartilage surface. So someone may have some small piece of cartilage damage in, in, the, in their knee, and we punch a small little hole in that cartilage surface that's been damaged. So a microfracture is a procedure, not the injury? Not the injury, no. Now, I never knew that. You may be talking about stress fractures. No, like I know like with Amari Stoudemire yeah. and various guys who had microfracture surgery in their knee. Mm-hmm. I always thought they were having surgery for, they had a whole bunch of, no, like, they're, a, they're basically ta- yeah. a splintered knee. No, it's actually the procedure that's being done to help the healing process. So we're stimulating the body to actually heal that, uh, that cartilage that's been damaged. Now, do you find that sports have, I mean, sports have led to a lot of rehab advances, I'm sure. Absolutely, yeah. You know, I mean, just last season we saw it with Adrian Peterson. Mm -hmm. A guy blew out his ACL, Mm -hmm. an injury that used to be, I mean, you look at some of these guys, like Gail Sayers, all Mm -hmm. right, back in the 1960s. Yes. He took an injury that today he'd be back from in six months, Mm -hmm. and it ended his career. Right. Yeah, that that, that type of uh, career-ending injuries are definitely getting less. You know, we're able to get patients and athletes back to their previous level of function much easier. That was based on surgical techniques and also our physical therapy protocols afterwards. Yeah, the physical therapy part is really pretty amazing how they, they work people yeah, back that in. that rapid mobilization where we would protect people for long periods of time, we don't do that as much anymore. Yeah, because I, like, I know back in the, when I was younger, I had a lot of ankle problems, and I would kept blowing out my ankle. Right, yeah. And they would, always, they would constantly immobilize me. Yeah, now it's uh, therapy, 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 mobilize, and get your, all that strength back again. Get back on those ice skates. Yes, yeah, that's, yeah, that that's won't right. be happening. Ever. So the whole microfiber thing, that's, I mean, uh, micro fracture. fracture thing, that's interesting. So it's not, so it's like, oh, God, this thing's not healing, so let's give it a, something to, to make it, it heal. Yeah. Let's, let's give it a reason to heal. Yeah. That's yeah. interesting. And a lot of it's based upon the stem cells. You know, that's a very popular topic right now. But what you're doing during the microfracture technique is that you're getting those stem cells that are from inside the bone marrow to come out to the surface of the cartilage that's been damaged so those stem cells can actually fix the cartilage itself. Hmm. Now, really, so you're basically using your own. Because I know that the, a big thing now is to save umbilical blood. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because of the stem cells. Yeah. I've done it for three of mine, three of my kids. Now, you save it for them? Yep. And so, like, if something happens to them, you hope that te- the technology is there to actually utilize that, and some of it is. That's amazing, you know. I mean, it, it, I mean, every day there's got to be advances and stuff like that you're reading about and things like that. I mean, you know, and just just simple things like you do a lot of uh, full joint replacement. Right? I do. I do hip and knee replacement surgery. You know, and I got a buddy of mine who works here, who just had his hip replaced. Right. And he's up. He was up and walking. I think inside a day. Yeah, we try to get patients up, walk in the same day of surgery, you know, just even within a few hours. Again, that, wow. same, that, same, that same philosophy of early mobilization. No more of this bed rest, re- relax and rest. We're going to get people up See, that moving. used to be the upside of surgery or something like that. At least I could say, <laughs> hang out in bed for a while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no more of that. That's the way I see things. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. But how long has that been for? Like, I remember somebody's mother getting a hip replacement. Even feels like it was just maybe five years ago, and it was... Bed rest. It's definitely been more prevalent in the last 10 years, but I would say probably in the last five years, this uh, very aggressive physical therapy protocol has been key to actually getting patients up and moving uh, very quickly. 
Even there's even a few centers that are actually getting patients out of the hospital within a day after a joint replacement. Wow, and it seems like it's younger and younger people getting either that. Maybe it's not younger and younger. Maybe it's just that it's I'm getting older and older, and more oh, of my contemporaries know. are needing this kind <laughs> yeah, of thing. You know, maybe just, that's yeah, what it that's is. That's exactly it. We're 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 in the demo now. Oh man. Like, now now when somebody does a, a hip replacement or a knee replacement. Yes. Now how long now how long does it typically last? You know, the uh, the average hip and knee replacements are lasting 20 to 25 years, but that's based upon an estimate that we have through all just mechanical lab testing. A lot of these components that we're using are all new, and they're newly designed, newer materials, so they could potentially last longer in the body uh, than we are testing them for. I like to give patients, and the industry likes to give patients, kind of lower-end results, you know, lower-end numbers, so that if it does last longer, well, fantastic. You know. And if it's you know, all of a sudden it's, it needs to be replaced, it's like, well, you're inside that window. That's what yeah. we told you about. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, absolutely. Under promise, over deliver. Yes. Try. Yeah. That's what we try. Now, um, what do you guys do now when you take out the bone? What do you do with the bone afterwards? Hmm. Usually goes off. Can you to take the, it home for your dog? or <laughs> you, It usually goes off to the pathology department. They analyze it. They look for any other problems. You know, there have been a few patients that have actually requested to take it home. Uh, one patient actually s- requested to take it home, and he wanted to do some scrimshaw carving of. <laughs> <laughs> That's the old, uh, the old. Yeah, I know exactly. Thing, right? yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's I funny. don't know how that worked out for him, but he did request. That's funny. Well, it is funny. All right, Dr. Frank Lombardo, our guest in the studio, and you have an event taking place, don't you? We do. What's going on? Uh, Dr. Steamer and I are both doing a lecture on total hip and total uh, knee replacement. Um, that's going to be. On, yeah, close to the microphone there, bro. That's going to be on uh, Thursday, June 20th at uh, Joseph Tower Auditorium, 40 Reed Place in Poughkeepsie. That's our Vassar Hospital. and it, uh, We encourage people to come down and uh, ask us questions uh, if they're thinking about it, if they have a relative that are thinking about it. Just come down and learn a little bit more. Well, like, now, which is uh, which is easier to recover from, do you think, the knee or the hip? Hip, hip by far. Oh, really? really? No, why's yeah. that? Yeah, hip, the hip uh, joint is a much simpler joint. There's a lot more space for swelling to occur, so it's typically a lot less painful for patients to recover from it. Um, knee replacement surgery is not easy, although it's gotten a lot easier in the last several years. There's been a lot of advances with um, pain management and physical therapy, but hip is, is a much easier procedure to recover from. Really, because it seems like every time somebody who's like, when they're like 70-something and you go, oh, oh they broke, broke a hip. hip, and then everybody goes, oh. That's it. That's the beginning of the end. Yeah, well, that's, broken hip. There's a difference in what we're, what we're talking about. You know, a hip fracture is is a lot different than a patient coming in for an elective hip replacement. You know, when a person breaks their hip, there's a lot of trauma involved in that, and they're also often a little deconditioned as well. So, patients that are coming in for arthritis in their hip and they're having a hip replacement is a different person than that's coming in to now, just having a hip repair. Now, now that's a, a ball and that's a ball joint. It's a ball right? joint, yeah, ball and socket. So now, now it's a ball and socket. So what happens? You take off the, you put a new ball on. Take off the ball and uh, we resurface the socket. So we put a new implant in there that acts as the uh, the acetabulum or the socket of the hip, and the ball is put on as well. And uh, you know, there's different materials. So you're not replacing the bone that comes out of there. No, no, no. We we are replacing the ball portion because the ball portion yeah. is removed during the procedure. So, so, you, so a lot more of your a lot more of your hip remains intact than maybe the layman might think. Yes, absolutely. I think, when I think hip replacement, I'm thinking hip replacement. Yeah, I'm thinking they got to take both I like got, everything. You know, yeah, you know both parts of it. And, no, and most of your bone, all of your muscle, all of the tendon still remains in place. So yeah, that it's very well maintained. Even more bone is preserved when you have a knee replacement. Most people are very confused when they think they're going to have a knee replacement. They're going to have the femur bone, the tibia bone cut off, and there's going to be new. Uh, implants put in. It really is a resurfacing procedure in knee replacement. It's a lot like having a cap on your tooth. Just a small portion of bone is removed and a new cap is placed on top of the two bones. What about the cadaver stuff? My friend had a uh, knee replacement and I don't know what they got, but they got something oh, a from a, a tendon yeah, or, tendon or yeah. something from... Very, very unique. Not often very done. You know, really? That, that is not a very commonly uh, performed procedure. Now, have you ever done uh, elbow replacement, like the Tommy John or anything like that? Have you ever no? That? that that that's outside the realm of what I practice regularly. I, I'm I most mostly specialize in hip and knee replacement. Okay. Well, anyway, if you need to know more about this, Thursday, June twentieth, over at the Joseph Tower Auditorium, uh, Reed Place in Poughkeepsie, 
And, um, you know, I'll tell you, this is one of those things. It, it, it does amaze me how many people that I know personally right? that have gone through hip and knee replacement surgery. And if you think you might be a candidate for it, or if you think maybe somebody you know is a candidate for it, you need more information on it, go on down to uh, Vassar Hall or Vassar on June 20th, the Joseph Tower Auditorium at Reed Place in Poughkeepsie. Their number over there, 720-877-729-2444. You want to get in touch with the folks. All right, Doc, thanks a lot. I appreciate your time today. Thanks a lot.